Welcome back everybody, thanks for tuning in. I know it's been a long time, I've been busy, sorry. Let's get right back into this one. So, see that water bottle placement? Ooh, mate, like a third hand, like a friend you never knew you had. Yeah, so, my hair's beautiful, look at it, beautiful. No dandruff. Anyway, so just lining up for some dominoes here. These are compound angle joints that I'm going to mortise and tenon in. And I'm just sort of roughly eyeballing things there seeing how they look and how much meat I got left and after doing all this marking and stuff I think I just went in and changed it anyway because whatever you know it's awkwardly quiet isn't it there you go so I'm just transferring those lines onto the rails and now because it's on this funny angle to gauge the depth and the position I'm actually just positioning it on the domino itself and I don't recommend you clamp your $2,000 machine like I'm doing there but yeah eyeballing it and that looks about right see the center of the bits mark matching up with the center of my pencil line so happy with that transferring that position then plus 10 mil onto where I want the middle of the, um, what do you call it, the middle of the mortise to be plunged and that'll give my 10mm uh, reveal. So onto the time lapse. Should work. So I've stopped nicely along my line here, my domino positions have lined up, my, where I'm going to cut this little taper has lined up within my theoretical mark, and I can fit my pencil in the groove of the datum line that I made that I wanted it to have that reveal off. So that worked for all intents and purposes. Now the last thing I need to do before glue up is just cut this angle here. And there we go. Now I've left this big so that I can have options and so that I can finish that with my hand plane. so easily go so wrong. We do of course have one little issue. Easily fixed. Now what I got here is a piece of Merbau that's uglier than Kylo Ren in a bikini. It was also nearly the right thickness and I didn't have to use a thicknesser so that's about the only reason I'm using it.
cows in my eye. <laughs> yeah, that about sums it up. That's what happened. Uh, so what I'm doing here is making the arm rests, which are in the shape of a battle axe. And this is going to be a big half lap joint that's going to glue to the side of the chair. And I'm just cutting it up with a dado. And it's a thing of beauty. Have a look at it. Viking battle axe armrest. How cool is that, eh? Now I'm going to take a fairly large chamfer off here to make it look like a sharpened blade. Yes, you can plane around a corner with a flat sole plane. This one in here is going to be a rasp job. And if you don't like time lapse and things moving in fast forward, feel free to not waste your breath telling me, because I really don't care. finally dropped from the high 30s down to the high 20s which is a lot more bearable and I can work. So what we've got here is one armrest is 90% complete and it involves a half lap connection down here. Um, over here we've got a through wedged mortise and tenon joint. Pretty hard to execute because it's actually on a compound angle and on the underside here it's seated with a shoulder on both sides. That shoulder is also on a compounding angle and took a bit of finessing. Uh, then down here we have a double dowel connection, again on a compound miter and the handle, the armrest sorry, is tapered from 25mm, one inch, down to 19mm. So there's a bit involved in that. I'm going to do the next one with you as my audience and show you the steps I took. I'll be as brief as I can because I'm told that brevity is a good thing. Rightio. Um, so the first thing I needed to do was work out this compound miter angle over here. So I'm going to move you in so you can have a close look at what's going on there. I've got an arrow right here showing me that this is the front and top of my armrest. Because messing that up would really suck. And what I'm attempting to do is center the connection, is to center this connection from the support to the armrest on the underside. And you can see I've got a couple of guidelines there and simultaneously center the position on the chair leg back there so that I've got a nice connection there and I've got a temporary support block clamped in there and all I've done is simply run my pencil along here scribe the line then taken that over to the miter saw and cut it just shy of the line and then come back and make sure everything is sitting there. So what I, what I want to make sure is that I'm centered here and here, that I've got no gap along there, and that I'm centered over there on my armrest support post, which I am. And now the next thing that I need to do is right over here, I need to mark what's going to be the bottom of my armrest over here. And I've already done that simply by place that there and square off and know where my bottom is. With that information in mind, I can then get this ready for drilling. And what I need to do is give myself a reference mark here and a reference mark here. That tells me that I'm referencing off this face and this edge. And do the same here and here.
Let's hope that fits. That's what we're after. So I've established where my tenon or my armrest support comes up through the bottom of my armrest. So I've found where my four corners are and I've just punched them in with an awl, A-W-L, awl. And I've got a sheet of paper, folded it sharp against the edges, found where those uh, little awl stabs are and poked them through the sheet of paper. Now I'm going to flip these together. That's the trick. Don't get confused. And on this side I've transferred the lines across so I know where my starting point is. So I've got to get these points to align with that starting point. Which I actually can't see through the paper. So I'm going to cheat a bit. There it is there. I'm going to transfer these four points across. And there they are. So now I can simply join the dots. And the fact that they've landed right where I circulated my lines is very comforting. It is very comforting indeed. So now I can get drilling and chiseling. Now see me levering off my end here and bruising this piece. I know it's bad practice but I don't mind too much because this is the underside of an armrest that's about this high off the ground. You're not going to see it. It's not going to affect its structural strength. So I'm just making my life a little bit easier. I don't see Paul Sellers using that method. Got it, full width. That's not bad, eh? I think I've uh, hammer and chiseled the mortise and tenon in about six years. Now we've just got to 
split and wedge. Time to split this tenon. <laughs> Now, length, taper, chamfer, chamfer, glue up. So what I'm attempting to do here is cut a taper in this piece using the jointer method. If you watch Norm Abrams videos, you'll see this. So what you do is, like I'm doing now, you take a very deep pass to half the length of your taper, and you very carefully back the piece out. Now, I go wrong here. See what I do is I dip it down and attempt to feed it through in the same direction. This is bad. You're meant to flip it 180. Now watch what happens. Uh, ouch! Yes, that could have ended up in my testicular region or eaten my arms off. So don't ever do this. You will die 100%. There is no question in it that is meant to be going through facing the other way. It probably bites it a little bit again now. No, it kind of made it. But yes, if you're going to use this method, it does work, but remember to flip it 180 first. And don't take any advice from me because you will die and using machinery is dangerous and I don't recommend it. Just never cross the road and be safe. Thank you, bye. Focus, you stupid thing. Oh my goodness, it just will not focus on that. <laughs> oh, that vibration is so bad. First insertion of the wedge, always very exciting. It's going to force you to focus. That's beautiful guys, that's just absolutely beautiful. How am I gonna get that out? God only knows. But I will. Oh, I could build that too if I had all those fancy tools. I'll go ahead and build it. So I've got an arrow right here. Focus. Focus, I said. I said, focus. There we go.